Hi guys! In this video we will test and review the Creality Ender 3 Max and show you all the pros and cons. So if you want to know more, then stay tuned. Hi guys, my name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. Hi again, I'm Sandra and today we will show you the prints made with our Creality Ender 3 Max and list all the pros and cons of this printer. Meanwhile, if you want to know how to assemble this printer and how to make the first adjustments, don't forget to check our previous video. And now, let's talk about the Ender 3 Max. The first thing we would like to talk about is the assembly. The printer comes mostly assembled and the steps you need to take are pretty straightforward. It will take just a few minutes from taking it out of the box and having it completely assembled. However, we found a few issues during the assembly. One was the X gantry assembly where we had to fix the wobbly issue. If you have that too, check our assembly video as we explain a quick and easy technique to fix it. To adjust the bed level and nozzle to bed distance, we had to use only the leveling knobs because the position of the ZN stop switch is not adjustable. On top of that, we have to loosen the springs too much so that the bed can reach the nozzle. The combination of the ZN stop switch not being adjustable and the weak springs is an issue. With the bed leveled, the stock springs don't have enough force to keep the bed stable. This can be resolved by fixing the ZN stop with T-nuts instead of the long screws on the vertical profile so that we can move it up and down or replacing the weak stock springs with stronger ones. And finally, the adjustment of the wheels grip on the Y-axis carriage. Creality decided to use crossed eccentric nuts on the Y carriage, which means that on the left side we have one eccentric nut on the middle wheel and at right two eccentric nuts on the outer wheels. Because the three wheels that don't have eccentric nuts have a fixed grip on the profile, they will wear out faster than the other. The Ender 3 Max is very similar to the Ender 3 and 3 Pro models, but with a bigger print volume and a few extras. The base of the printer has the same width as the Ender 3 and 3 Pro models, but Creality was able to increase the size of the printing area by attaching the 20 x 40 vertical profiles to the sides of the base, and this way gaining the extra millimeters needed for its bigger bed. The announced print volume is 300 by 300 by 340 millimeters. And with the stock firmware, this is how much the axis will move. But since the print surface is a bit bigger, you can stretch the area a few millimeters. Actually, the print surface, which is this removable 4 millimeter thick carborundum glass, measures 310 millimeters in X and 320 millimeters in Y but the size and y-axis is limited by these clamps that secure the glass. Normally, it's expected that such a big glass would have a little bit of warpage, but this one does not. If we place a ruler on top of it, we can check that it's pretty good. As for adhesion, we didn't have any problems with it, and we didn't have to use any products to increase the adhesion. At the back of the bed, we have the traditional Creality Strain Relief, which is a good thing to have. As for the electronics, this printer is equipped with the 4.2.2 Creality board. This board is equipped with a 32-bit microcontroller and a couple of TMC's 2208 for the X and Y axis and Allegro's 4988 for the Z and the extruder. The TMC drivers make the motors run silent. But although we only have TMC drivers on the X and Y axis, the Z and extruder are actually not noisy. The board also has a dedicated connector for a leveling sensor right here. As usual with Creality printers, the wires that connect in the green screw type connectors haven't been crimped with ferrules, 
and worse than that, are tinned with solder. This is not a good idea, so we always recommend to crimp these wires with ferrules for a better and safer electrical connection. The access to the board is not as easy, especially if you have the printer already assembled. Like the Ender 3 Pro, the board is accessible from the bottom side, but because the Max has the vertical profiles at the sides of the base, you have to be very careful when tilting it to the side. As for the power supply, it's equipped with a 24 volt and 14.6 amp Meanwell power supply, which is a known brand and good quality power supply. The print head is equipped with the same hot end as many Creality models. As for the layer cooling, the Max has two blowers, one on each side. Here at the right are a couple of threaded holes for the guys that want to install a leveling sensor. In our case, and since the glass is pretty flat, we didn't have any issues when printing the first layers, so we didn't feel the need for installing a leveling sensor. As for the extruder, it's the basic single-geared one, but the difference here is that this one is the metal version and not the plastic one. Next to the extruder is the filament runout sensor. And unlike the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, the filament on the Ender 3 Max is loaded far away from the lead screw. The spool holder on the Max is installed down here at the left. We actually prefer to have it down here instead of having it at the top, especially on a tall machine such as this one. However, it can be a little tricky at first because of this cable, but if you keep the cable always like this, it won't be an issue. The X gantry moves up and down by the action of a single lead screw at the back left side. On the Max, Creality decided to include an anti-backlash lead screw nut. Normally, it's expected that a machine this big would have a dual lead screw setup, but Creality decided not to go that way. In fact, the power supply is installed on the opposite side, which makes a possible upgrade not as straightforward. The axe gantry assembly and the wheels grip on the Z carriage wheels need to be correct to keep the backlash to the minimum on the side that does not have the lead screw. Now, let's talk about the print results. We printed several models in PLA filament such as the Ripple Cube, the Benchy, a small dinosaur. We also printed a couple of articulated models. And a tall vase. The quality is actually very good. The walls are very nice, except for a bit of ghosting. On this model, we see that it printed all these details nicely. And these are the articulated models. They ended up very nice. As usual, you can find the slicer profile we use for this machine in our Patreon page, so check it out. You can check in the video description the link, as well as all the links for the STLs we printed. These articulated models also can be used as phone holders. However, when printing the vase which was sliced in vase mode, we were not able to print it. Instead of moving continuously, the printer was constantly stopping and going, and by doing this, was leaving marks on the print. After troubleshooting the problem, we concluded that the print resume feature was messing with the phase mode prints. Once we disabled the power resume, the printer then started to print the phase as expected. In our channel, you can find a video dedicated to this problem which explains this in detail and several ways on how to fix it. The tall vase was also to check if it would have any issues along the Z. As you can see, 
it didn't have any issues along the Z. So, having said that, here are the pros and cons that stand out from the bunch. On the positive side, we have the bigger print volume, the easy assembly, the 32-bit board with TMC drivers on the X and Y axis, the Meanwell power supply, the filament runout sensor, a removable and nicely flat glass, and the dual layer gluing fans. On the negative side, we have the squareness that needs to be checked and fixed because it's not guaranteed that it will be 100% correct from factory. The non-adjustable Z end stop switch, the weak bed springs, the access to the board, which is not easy because it's from the bottom side, the fact that they use tin wires instead of ferrules on the board connectors, and the issue with the print resume feature while printing vase mode models. We also have to point out the extruder that, although it's the metal version, it's still just a single geared one. And the good printing results, except for some amount of ghosting. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video and if yes, don't forget to give it a like. We will see you guys next time. Bye!